Excellent. So now we can start, you know, totally, legitimately, and accurately, and officially bashing Murder in Baldur's Gate. Yay! And Hellman Rock. Yeah. This was not fun. No. <laughs> officially, no. Those things that we actually did with it had their moments. Okay, yeah, we'll we did fun. That. We'll get to that. But that's because I have fun players and people who, well, regularly go off the rails. Yeah. What are rails? I don't know. Are they starting points? No. Uh, are those the things you're supposed to leave? No, not. Maximum velocity? Well, depending on what you're talking about, sometimes you can just jump on a rail mid-game. Look at Sonic the Hedgehog. <sighs> so, this or, is already started. Or, or, <laughs> or, or fire rails. Yeah. Anyway. You continuously jump off of those. Anyway, Murder in Baldur's Gate was the most recent season of Dungeons and Dragons Encounters. Runs every Wednesday at, uh, what? Yes, Andrew? Any Where was the murder? Show? At finer game stores everywhere. Haha! Uh -huh. Yeah, friendly well, local game store has D&D uh, &D encounters every Wednesday. You can go find out how to play. And see if you play like it. Yeah, it's great. Usually, usually. Frequently even. It just as sits as a... here. And I don't want to punch it. Here, I actually did not play this. I'm kind of here as a no, but then, like outside third party, the voice of reason. So Tom's the voice of reason. This fine gentleman. Yeah. Was our DM. I played the mage and you were a thief. It was a rogue. Same thing. Halfling Not necessarily. Rogue. Not necessarily the same. Wee thing. little halfling rogue. Wee little halfling rogue. <sighs> so I, I got, got, I got 120 breakfast. gold off of betting on that person. Well, for see, that, that's the fun stuff that happened that would have happened and could have happened in almost any adventure with you guys. Thanks for that credit again, Andrew. Yo. Yeah, thanks. Uh. Fire Where do I start that. with this? Let's start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The name, Murder in Baldur's Gate, one <laughs> doesn't happen. Like, from the third week on, we kept asking our DM every week, so when's this murder? Where's the and murder? There's no murder. Well, no. there's murder everywhere, but that's just Baldur's Gate. There's no, sig no significant murder in Baldur's Gate. Apparently it was supposed to be in the first session, but... No, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first play. session that we played... I don't know. Uh, there's a couple of, of a bunch of some townsfolk right, die. No, then no, the first session the was two guys get up and game. fight, and then one of them dies, and I guess that counts as the murder. That's then, a fight. That's a fight. That's yeah. not a murder. That's I a know. Scary. That's not it's murder. It's pretty much a duel. That's There's a like skirmish the... in Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Yeah. And like then the, the loser or the winner of the duel then becomes some sort of horrible monster that the players have to fight. That Again, that's not murder. murder. That's not murder. That's, that's a defense. That's you combat. Call, you call that an exorcism? That's just a duel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I, uh, there's no point nine against it. Man, I'm so glad that I just walked out halfway through the first session, so I couldn't be like, "So was this supposed to be the murder?" Well, they didn't actually leave the table, but his character's like, "This guy, I don't know. I'm out." That was the second no, session. No, that was the second. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. I, I, halfway it. through, I left because we had to get hit. Um, yeah. Yeah, you had to yeah, actually get stuff to do. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. <sighs> you had legitimate things to others yes. to do, and none of us blame you. Let's, let's, I mean, I get my myself for how to do it. package in a nice piece of paper, which is great. Packaging is decent. No, it's not. You get a 61 page campaign guide of Balter, Baldur's Gate. Which is actually really good and really useful, except there's no, there's not really any art, for the most part. There's architectural drawings of buildings and specific places, but none of the general sweeping art you'd see in any kind of other role-playing product, especially from D&D. &D. They like throwing, like, oh, great, we got this great painting, let's throw that in there. Oh yeah, the great Elf. That works. Or at right. least they just recycle the same three paintings. Yeah, I don't care if it's something from so, from another that. game. As long as it just sets the mood properly. But if all you are interested in Baldur's Gate, that's not a bad place to start. You get plenty for it. You get a DM screen with a map on the outside. The game does not come with a map of Baldur's Gate. Uh, nice art, some of the main characters, bunch of handy stuff for the DM, and that's fantastic. That's okay. great. DM screen. That's what you expect from a DM screen. That's not the problem. This is the problem. This, I hate this. I hate this so much. I'm so angry just looking at it. You want to shoot it? We can light it up. No, Tom, I'm sorry you're not actually here because I might burn it after we're done recording this. Oh. 
It's six. Uh, <laughs> Tom, it's, it's like 16 <laughs> pages of things that can happen in Baldur's Gate, depending Tom, on what people do. It's not 16 pages, it's 31 pages of Whatever. not enough information, stuff that goes nowhere, and a bunch of bullshit that doesn't matter. Uh, if this happened four weeks ago, here's an option. Not even four weeks, that was six weeks. Throughout the course of the adventure, there are three patrons who are becoming more and more evil. But since the players never got to see them not being evil, they don't realize they're becoming more evil. They think it's just how they are. Yeah. And they gain more or less evil points throughout the whole adventure. And somewhere, like the second to last session, the two people with the highest evil points have these events happen, and the lowest one gets dropped. Six sessions earlier, which is over a month in playtime... Two months. Well, it's two. a month and a half. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, once a week? Yeah. So, a month and a half before that happens, they start dropping hints about one of the plots, which is the most likely one to get dropped. Great. Because no one likes Silver Shield. It's not even that, it's just math. Like, you look at when he actually is going to get them, there's a whole bunch of times where he just doesn't, he's not even involved. Yeah. And then, you guys stopped him once or twice, and that kind of kept him down, but he still didn't really... Overall, he's the least likely one to happen. Well, and yet, he's the one they make the most It's the biggest about. deal, it's, it's got the most written about it, there's an elaborate page and a half. <sighs> well, it will like probably happen in their one fucking playtest. Uh, you probably, they probably saw this guy as the, uh, you know, the, the guy who, you know, made it happen. And so they decide, well, we'll just go ahead and drop a whole bunch of hints about him because this is the guy that's going to be. And, um, you know, they never really bothered to explore what might happen other ones. See, the problem was... They don't explore a lot in this. Yeah, okay, one, they don't explore a lot. Two, they don't give me a lot of information. Me, the, like, They don't give the DM a lot to go off of. It's very much an improv, just kind of winged experience, which you, they, you do have to read the whole campaign guide to get that, to really pull this off. And that's not bad in a module normally, but I had to run this for Encounters. Encounters is supposed to be minimal setup, just come in, read over that day's adventure, run it, and everyone's happy. This required a lot of real effort and work, and barely, well, not much a, was given to you. Even a module, you're really not supposed to have a lot of improv going on. Like, it, the whole point of, an, of a module is it's supposed to be the whole goddamn thing. Everything, it should be pretty self-contained. The only, the only odd thing should be the exact character, like the exact player character actions. The way this is laid out is like, alright, on some day, there's some things that happen. Let the players find them, like, organically and naturally. But if you don't have the information to give the players, or have any adventure drops, how are we supposed to do that? Yeah, yeah so you kind of have to force it and plot railroad it way more than you would normally be necessary, especially if you're, depending on the group you are, you have no idea where your players are going to end up going and what they're going to do. I saw a review online, someone talking about the one session, like, oh yeah, it was great. Most of their sessions sounded like their players were just shopping. Right. Just going well, about well, being well, well, let's, Shopping let's, is what you do before you get to the table. Right. Let's make this absolutely clear. To, to sit there and say that it's necessarily forced and you know that the, that there's a plot railroad in an encounters module is insane because every other encounters module is pretty much everyone's in a tavern and some old wizard comes up and says you know these things need to be taken care of or so you've been hired to go do this well yeah that's yeah. how it's kind of supposed to be but i had to it's always just story set up fight story set up fight that's generally encounters this is kind of, everyone wakes up and does stuff and then throw these things at them throughout their day. Right. Well, I'm just saying, though, in terms of plot railroading, like, to say oh, that that's... this is plot no. railroading means it's really bad. Yeah. It needed like, railroading. There wasn't any. Oh, there was a railroad. We just didn't use it. No, there wasn't. <sighs> Corin. Corin was apparently the plot railroad. Yes. There's a character built specifically into the module. Yeah, look up Corin. He might be in the other book, because that's how it works. A lot of the information is in the other book. If you haven't read it already, uh, if you're trying to run this on the spot, you're going to be going back and forth and having your players sit around and wait forever while you look up a lot of this stuff. 
All right. Right, which goes well, up it says using, against the counters. Yeah, it says using corn as a resource. It has it right right here, page, what is it, 12? When the, cur when the characters need to know about the city's history or current power structure, Corrin is an excellent advisor. So basically they're saying, oh, you no, know, no, no, no. when things don't, aren't going quite where you want them, you know, have Corrin come in. Like, okay, that's, okay, that can work. But the thing is, the way they're also saying it is that you probably shouldn't need to do this. Like, your characters should And what you're not just... getting from that is, in a lot of the different, like, specific, like, stages, the encounters for the day, each day or what have you, there will be points where they're like, oh, you know, if the players get arrested doing this, maybe Corrin springs them out of jail. Or if the players don't know what to do, throw Corrin at them. Maybe he shows up at, their, at a tavern, or maybe he does this. It's He's sprinkled throughout the book as, if you don't know what to do, just have this guy tell people what to do. Which is not the way D&D should work. Well, it depends, well, no, it depends on his involvement. Because the thing is, what they're saying is that Corrin, this random, like, event, like retired adventurer, is just <laughs> going to go around and tell these people how to do it. If that was the case, he'd be like, okay, these guys are a problem. Something's wrong with these three people. You should either investigate them or get them out of power. That's what an adventurer would do. Mm. Where yeah. they're saying that he oh, will yeah. encourage us to go with their plots for evil. Yeah. Which if he okay if he was there all three plots for evil and you have to choose which evil people you want to stop and none of you really cared by like nope. the fourth or fifth session. Just see the thing is if they wanted to make us if they wanted to like I actually had this idea on the way over if they right. wanted to make the problem was that we did not feel involved. <laughs> no, we did. We did not feel involved. So what you could have done is had one person you know in the first or the second like first through the third sessions be like actually come up to the cut up to the you know the heroes like say you're the heroes of the wide. Something strange is happening in Baldur's Gate. I'm not sure what it is, but these people seem to be involved. That's Maybe a should... really good idea. Someone in here should have done that. The second in commands of someone, someone in their power structure, someone, someone who's involved with or them. Or someone should in like the city council or something should have been like, here, can you someone. do something? And then, and then, like third or fourth session, have them murder! Yeah. Oh, bam, then there'd be murder in Baldur's Gate. There'd be oh, murder? Yeah. And then the thing oh. is, we'd, we'd realize, we'd realize <laughs> that these people were kind of... These they people who are kind of shifty, we realize that these people are kind of shifty, they probably have more information about it. Why did this happen? Who was it? We'd be involved. We'd want to get close to these people. It fixes everything! Oh, Chris. This is a book of errands and, well, not quite fetch, fetch quests. It's a side no, quest book. But this is a book of side quests that you pull for people doing more interesting things than the player characters. No, Chris. Yeah. Like, that's in the module. Your players make it different. That's the only reason I kept coming back and running this for six no, 12, 11, yeah, X, 11. 12, yes. 11. Well, 12, 12 if we count that prequel, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was 12 weeks. We the Little Lantern was a great place. We'll get the to that. The Little Lantern is awesome. Yes. We'll get to that. <laughs> they ended so, up owning a tavern. Yeah. Yeah. And running it successfully, and that was more interesting than... This was an afterthought. Anytime I'm like, oh, guys, there's these things are happening, they're like, oh, shit. Like, oh, okay, you know, you late at night, you know, at some point, I'll go out and I'll do some stuff and, like, you know, <laughs> screw it up or something, whatever. Speaking of going out late at night. Oh, hey. yeah, you guys. Oh, this guy right here fake haunted the shit out of Baldur's Gate. I did. We, Chris, and, uh, and then, instead of blackmailing someone, we effectively, Chris, we, we, we Christmas pulled off the, the Charles Dickens Christmas Carol on someone. Yep. Yeah. Instead of using blackmail. Yep. Good times. Yes. I played it. I I'm someone games. from your past. Some should have deal. No, or don't no, stop running no. for this position. Chris, I, I, I and it worked because I was. Uh, I made rolls to see how it worked, and I failed, so he believed it. Yeah. Chris, no, I, what I, I double check. I, I was a mage of the illusion school, so I just illusioned up Adol Adrian, just being like, "You guys don't run, or else this will happen to you." <laughs> and I just asked the party not to yep. react, and we just acted like he was insane. Yeah, it was fun. It was All great. Right. Uh, you guys go did a fake ghost busting? Yeah, we did. Well, it was more of an exorcism because the paladin was like, "Be gone!" And then the cleric. The cleric. No, no. no, no Arthur's the paladin. No, no Arthur's the paladin. It was the one random player that joined us the second time. Not Matt. He was there for one session. He played the other cleric. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 We did just have a random. And then guy. he's like, "You know what? That's the nice thing about encounters. If you can just drop in, drop out whenever you can." He's been here the whole time. I've been to like when I, I had to travel for a job. I'm like, "Oh, I'm in Ohio. Oh, cool. There's a place that does encounters, and I didn't have to miss a week." Mm. Oh, yeah. Also it was cool. Jake and I rolled up. It was great. Hey, and you impressed them. Well, yeah. These people had never played before, and we've got sh folders full of different characters. We've already got. 
personalities and role playing and all this stuff. Yeah. What flavor Wasn't that when like both of you were playing bards? Skulls? Yes, yes, that was bard season. Mm -hmm. That skulls. was skulls, yeah. Even better. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, except the, except at my table when it was like I'd like to make an arcana check. You what figure out you're the Baywild. It's been a year, Chris. Good times. And yeah. Uh, what else do I? I have so much anger and rage for this. Every week, the you know I didn't look at it like like five minutes before I had to leave. I would sit down, you know, an hour or two before, and just sit down and read over the encounters for that session once or twice, and I would get so sad and angry. Because, oh, they, they're like, oh, they like, here, this thing happens, and there's not really any motivation. There's never a real explanation of motivation. You're supposed to come up with it. But well, they don't no, give you enough the motivation is basically, no, 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 Bahal's taking these people over. So that means that more or less, a wizard did it. Yep. No, it's, yeah. like, a demon did it. Even. A demon did it. That's, well, a, a demon well, murdered God, but still. It's like, oh, they're doing all this horrible shit because he said so. Like, no! I want more than that! Then they should be conflicted about things. Oh, one thing I... This could have been no, so much they're more not. interesting! Oh my god, there's so much potential in this story! But they just like, ah, we threw so, a thing together, here you go. Chris. Pay hey, us money. Chris. I had the money idea. thing I'm okay with. They did that because people were sick of not being able to buy the Encounters modules, which... I think they should just, okay, after the season's done, put them up on the site for yeah. 15 bucks. After the season. After the season. That's important. Right yeah. After. That's we important. had a player who's... Obsessed with D&D, &D. I think it's his only actual hobby. But he's, uh, he, started he bought this first day, yeah. and he had, and he read through the whole thing by the next week before we even started running it. We knew he was. We, uh, so the honestly, whole encounter, he knew everything. Mm -hmm. He couldn't always put it together with what had changed because he wasn't there every week. But the thing is, we had asked him, "Please don't read this. Please don't read this." You are like, we literally said, "Don't read this." He's like, "Okay, I'll try not to." No, he just, no. yeah, he just went and through it. And then was and throughout said, oh, yeah, the whole season, he keeps like trying. I can tell, I can see him. It's so obvious that he's trying to force the party to go in the direction that he knows is what you're supposed to do. But the characters have no way of knowing this or figuring it out. And, and also, like, do this. Let's do this thing. And everyone's like, "Why?" He's like, because that's not a reason. He was trying to invoke meta knowledge without seeming to be like outside the game, but he was very bad at it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, honestly, honestly, invoking meta knowledge without seeming to is a really big step up for him. So give him some props. No, no, no. Well, he wasn't yeah. even he wasn't even being very good at not seeming to. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's the fact that he still made some kind of effort. Is it yeah. Something? His effort was let's go do. Tom something. used to run encounters before he moved to another state, so he's familiar with the player in question. Yes. yes. And not only like that, my my usual prep time was, oh my, was oh crap! I have, I have to be at encounters before <laughs> encounter starts. I drive up. I, everyone's already there. I set my stuff up. I flip through the month through the, the week's module real fast. As yeah, you're eating food. I, you, you, you need five, ten minutes to look it over while you eat something, and then bam, encounters. Yeah, and everyone has a good time. Yeah. Oh, I was and, and Chris dies. Thank Chris. I, Tom's dice, legitimately hate me in every game system that he's run against me. If he's in charge. And it, it's it's completely valid attacks and stuff. It's just like, oh, I crit. Oh, I didn't crit, but I rolled maximum damage. Twice. Oh, shit, I rolled 12 successes. How many hitboxes do you have? Yeah, <laughs> I got 12. Five. Well, sorry. <laughs> the damage just took you to death. I shot by an entire army, and every single one of them hit, like, the same spot. <laughs> yeah, and you were the only shot for that. Yeah, no, I, I had this idea when we were leaving our place to come over here, is that if wizards really wanted to show that madness are taking these guys over, why didn't they have something like, I don't know, a Call of Cthulhu madness system, where they started changing depending on what happened in the Yeah, nowhere in this does it actually describe that they're more menacing, or that their personality's changing at all, it's just that the, things, got the things that they're yeah. doing are I more and more awful. Red horns. What's up, Tom? No, forget Call of Cthulhu, just use the Wraith of Us. The old, the old evil meter. Yeah. You know, where it moves <laughs> and stuff. No, it's perfect. It would have been absolutely perfect for them. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, like that. Why didn't they do something like that? And this is this marks the first season of the Sundering for the Forgotten Realms. Kind of. No. This is the leadoff. No, this. No, this was actually the first season. The one before this would have been the leadoff. This is the actual first so adventure. So the Sundering is happening? The, happen the Sundering is happening now. Yeah, that's why Bahal is kind of coming yeah. back and again. 
Well, he's been dormant or something or other. They don't really explain that very well. You should read some other D&D properties. The you books will tell you what happens. You should read this list of books by Ari Salvo. I don't read D&D books for the same reason. I don't read comics. I don't have time to read 20 things at once. Well, you have to read all the books. You have to read the comic book. You better get the video games, too. I mean, what the hell? If you're not the watching game, the, the cartoon... It's all I gotta go. No, no, it's, it's all right, Tom. There's a free play. mobile game you just have to play for this. Oh, well, yeah, no, exactly. Which, oh, well, no, which starts you off in Baldur's Gate. At least you're not, at least you're not starting off as a draft. Like, honestly, yeah. like, the thing is... They were try. I guess what they were trying to do is they were trying to have it be more freeform, be more like away from. You were just told exactly what to do. Yeah, they're trying to make it more like not fourth edition Dungeons yeah. and Dragons, but which we're is, all okay with for the most part. But the problem encounters was, needs a direct like shoot you drive well, down. Kind of. They need to have clearly delineated choices, and yeah. they need to have exactly. enough information to back up these choices. And that's the problem. We had more freedom of choice of how we were going to accomplish things. Mm -hmm. And how, what we were going to do when we were supposed to be drow slave warriors. <laughs> Remember? Like, in that season, when we were just being, like, a couple drow houses were like, okay, we're letting you out of the slave pits, so, so you, you can, can do, do this. this. Oh, we no. don't care how you do it, but accomplish this goal, this goal, you do this one, you try to stop that, and then we roll, and, and it was fun. And sometimes, drow. And sometimes so I drow. just went off we in the car the and made a cure-all. That's what I would do. That's what I did for that entire first season, like session I came in. Well, My character goes off, makes a cure, all comes. Well, you also got what? asked to impersonate Lol. That was Drow oh, season oh. three, right? No, 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 no. Fun, oh, fun. oh man. About the player that would use metagame knowledge. The first time I play encounters with these fine gentlemen, I was playing a changeling, a changeling this is skull, good. and quit. Th this player just goes. <laughs> it, it I, I didn't. And this player just goes. Hey, I got a plan. You're a, I've got a plan. And he didn't even have the magic, did You're he? You're a changeling. Somebody else do the magic. Why don't you impersonate Loth? In front of a high-level wizard, a high-level priestess, and a high-level uh, warrior. All drow, all adherents, like, all familiar like, with the power of law. Why don't you appear as a shoddy copy of what you think their goddess looks My like? My body wasn't that big. You were going to get killed instantly. No, no, they no. would just slaughter you. They'd be like, that's, no, we're not standing for this. The you, second part of his plan don't. involved him setting off a smoke bomb in order to cover the change. So, like, so he's basically going to like, an attack. In the middle of, like, a place of power. You yeah. Just set off a some sort of smoke bomb. That'll that'll go well. Yeah, that'll like, cause we, we, we oh, tried yeah. to, like yeah. we tried to yeah, explain we tried to explain to him that this wouldn't work because they'd see through. It. No, no, but they just look at it. No, they have more senses than just looking at something, and they know what their goddess was supposed to. There's look a chance like. one of them may have actually spoken to Lol. The priestess or had a high chance of Walt. having that. Yeah, see? The mage might have had been in the presence of Walt. Walt well, might have spoken to him, yeah, because the whole thing was trying to demon wave and got you. Is that a better idea? Or currently speaking to. Yes. Like, Walt could have been that one room? in the corner. No. Alright, let's get back to complaining about Baldur's Gate. Yes, <laughs> sorry. But yes, the, like, and, there, we had more options. We had more capability to do things. Even when we had specific goals and we were told to go co accomplish specific goals, we, we, had, more op we had more options. We had more capability to complete those goals in the ways we felt best doing. Yeah, Tom? No, it's, it's kind of the idea of the kind of the paralysis of limitless possibility. Like, yeah. you could do anything... Nothing happens. How do you, how can you make a choice? Like, you can't weigh all the different options. You can't, you know, because there's simply too many. Yeah. That's yeah. why... That player in question? Point. Player in question, freaking... I don't, he didn't do a whole lot. Because yeah, it was kind of like, all right, guys, wake up and go. And he was like, what do you mean go? I'm supposed to have a thing to do. I'm like, well, go find yeah, something to do. He, Mother's he, Gate! Just wander around! He, he, They're shopping! He was waiting for breakfast. the proper cues to happen. He was trying to wait for the proper cues to happen so that he would know when he's supposed to do this action that advances this specific plot. Right, because he read the match. Because he read... Well, partially, that's also how he usually thinks. Although he is kind of a plague sympathizer. Well, anyway... That's a really old reference. So, Chris, Sorry. you have this lovely list in front of you. What are your problems with Baldur's Gate? Okay, we've covered some of the list. We've covered some of the list. Oh, no, hey, it twice. I have a page of notes. Wow. 
makes me feel like an asshole for just off the cuffing all of this. No, well, because I wanted to have, I wanted to know why I was actually angry. I didn't want to just like come in and start yelling. I wanted to sit down and like figure it out you and analyze it. You wanted to be constructive. <laughs> yes. Um, and most of my complaints are why it's bad for encounters, but it does kind of make it bad in a lot of reasons. Uh, it, early on in it, they give you a text block that just says more or less. Yeah, just wing it, do whatever. It, it seriously says, do things in different orders, do this, do that, whatever works for your group. Saying, but then it, basically but it, saying, you know, just do it, just, you don't even need this, just make shit up. Yeah, but then that completely invalidates the entire scheduling system. That they and the entire, that. yeah, yeah, it validates all of that. What if, doesn't give what, if the, what if I have the, the number 10 event happen, like, way early, and then you guys never knew about a plot, didn't even have time to stop it? But also, it does, they don't give you enough side information that you can have things react differently. Like that, like, we tried to do other things, remember? And you're just like, there's, that, that doesn't fit into the plot. And, and it violates one of the core concepts of encounters. What if you ran num the event number four and week someone two, else. and then that person left, you know, like, not permanently, but just for a couple of weeks. Yep. Then they go to this other comic shop, they play encounters. Week four, the DM is just going right down the line. Week four, he's oh, yeah. already, he already knows what's happened. Yeah, if I if you were to play one session of this at a different store, you can't just walk you can't just walk into that game. No, no you can't. Which you is can't. really core to D and D, or at least encounters. Yeah. No, no, it's core to encounters. It's core to D and D encounters. Yeah, you need to be able to like, you know what? I have to be able to make make it in two weeks. I'm just gonna show up this week, and you can yeah. show up. And you're like, oh, we're level four now. Okay, cool. And you do some stuff, and then you go. Yeah. Like D and D encounters is supposed to be very plug and play characters. Yeah, it's for it's designed for people who can't play D and D otherwise. It's designed for people who just want to try it out, it's see too, if it's, it's any too, fun for them before they start buying stuff. Time. Yeah, because the thing is, you you started playing your first encounters with Dungeons and Dragons was playing D and D encounters, and now you run several games. You're part of <laughs> others. <laughs> and been three years, and I can't stop. It's yeah, like, because yeah, it was just it was the perfect thing for it. So you much started fun. It up. Like I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons since uh, the second printing of second edition. Yep. Um, I was never able to play enough, and yeah. so, I, but I, I was also, like, the way that I, pl the, the group that I started playing with, it was very big on non-standard encounters, just things that would happen that you would have to figure out. It wasn't always, there's a monster, kill it, it yeah. was, well, how are you going to even hurt the Jaguar Man? <laughs> the ideas, the, one of the core ideas of, of... You know, that you can put into encounters is this idea of, or just the, the internal, is this idea of problem solving. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of, of, the, of having encounters is here's a problem, solve it. Now, yes. this is in, now, now typically you're going to see that in a, you know, like the, the whole point of an adventure is here's a problem, solve it, but it's a much larger thing. It's a, yeah, it's a larger scale a problem. Campaign, which here's a really epic problem. Solve you, don't, it, you might not even know about it for a while. Yes. Right. But it's you creeping up on it. different layers of problem solving kind of stacked up on one another. So that's not really, I wouldn't say that's not standard. It's not combat necessarily, well, yeah. but it's still the, yeah. it's still the correct idea. Yeah, of there's non-combat the encounters. There's yeah. skill challenges. There's straight up role playing things. Well, no, but yeah, what I was sure. saying is at the time, instead of just being, you know, some groups would be very, okay, there's our problem, here's our violence. Yeah. Whereas what we were doing was a lot of just like, there's a problem, how are you going to do it? And right. so that, that was a good start, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah right. Right. It's all right. I was going to say, which unfortunately for 4E, not, not to derail too far, but that's kind of, that's one of the big problems with 4E is outside of skill challenges, generally each encounter is going to almost necessarily... It's going to be combat. Here's Fourth our edition, problem, here's our violence. Fourth edition is a great entry for... In the D and D, if you've never played, oh, especially if you've played video games, you can get oh, you yeah. can figure out Fourth Edition. It'll, you can get into yeah. it. Yeah, it'll definitely help you find the right reference points. But at the end of the day, Fourth Edition is very much just like a very in-depth kind of awesome little miniatures combat game. Right, pretty much. Yeah. More or less. I mean, you can throw all the role playing you want into it and make it that feel. kind of a game, but, but the, the game books don't really mention it. You the do. game, everything that the game, oh, you look through the rule books, it's all about all these different various powers that you are mostly all combat oriented. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much everything in there. And if it's not combat oriented, it's exploration oriented. Yes. You know, there's very little that's like, you know, gain a plus three on your diplomacy check. You know, yeah, what are those? You're not going to see that date. 
because you know this that's is just, not a tale. That's, that's just an inherent. What the game's about. That's just that's just but a that's passability what, you have. Well, I mean that's the thing. That's that's the whole point of the system, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Oh yeah, it does what it wants. To, it does what it was set out to do, and it did it very well. Yeah, yeah. it was trying to make yeah, a pencil and paper, um, but, but, massively but, multiplayer. But, yeah. yeah. Likewise, I would. Yeah, exactly. Likewise, I wouldn't take the say this white wolf storyteller system and try to build a combat heavy D and D style adventure off of it, just because it's not really set up for that. Yeah, you know, you'd, be, you'd be leaving off, not, you know, nine tenths of the character sheet if you did that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so. so. Although sometimes the no, the non the, the stuff that doesn't seem like it'd be combat oriented, eventually they say, like, "Wait a minute." We well, just shoot lasers from yeah, my yeah. eyes. Right. How is this lore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to try and argue that point with you. Andrew. Well, that's exalted. No, it's there. Exalted is it? Its own thing. Yes. Yeah, that's. Uh, I meant more like vampire. No, seriously, lore for dragon bloods. You can throw fireballs. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lore's where you get all your magic from. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Back on point. Back on point. Oh, another thing is. D and D again, or D and D encounters is again a place where people might have their first time playing Dungeons oh and Dragons. Oh, yeah. poor, poor and rubbish. if you and if you have a good uh, encounters group that you play with a lot, eventually encounters might be the first time that you actually run a game. Mm -hmm. Not with this. Oh, you will have to like okay, sit down, read the sixty-one page book, read all of this, and then kind of make stuff up. I have never done this. What am I doing? Your uh, your brain might melt. And the great thing is, wait, you go, Tom. Oh no, no, I was just about to say, if you're brand new DM, this is not a good starting adventure. No, not at all. Horrible. No. It's something where you know, like, like, like the other encounters, like especially the ones I use, you know, when the you know, I start encounters pretty much from the start of encounters, and I've yeah. been running it since like the second season, all <laughs> of the you know, up to maybe about six or seven, seventh season. And up through the, up that whole point, everything was basically like, you know, it's, it's pretty much everyone was a dungeon crawl. Here's your setup, here's your map, here's how they want to fight, you know, here's these characters, you know, if you're going to talk to them, here's kind of their personalities, yeah. etc. Yeah. That's what you need, you know, but it's all, but here's the thing, it's all contained on two pages. That's what a starting DM needs. He needs a lot, or she needs a lot of, you know, a, a, some, some direction, some help. Yes. Yeah, I think they describe personality wise maybe five people in this entire thing. One of them. And in a role playing heavy story like that, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since one or two of them are people you don't really deal with a whole lot. But I can't say, at least on the other hand, considering the price point is you have to buy all of the books and then you have to spend $35 on top of that in order to run this, I have a feeling they were just thinking, you know. There's no starting DMs going to be doing this. No, no. This is... No. This is very, you know, ah, we're putting out something for people who've been playing D&D for a long time. Like, right. you know, you know, yeah, here, here's all you need. Here's here's the way the whole city runs. Here's some stuff that happens. Yeah, we're in a module. But... Yeah, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but Isn't that going but against... It's not a module. Spirit. You're right. The Isn't that go against the spirit of Encounters, then? Like, you know, trying to get you people in it? It not only it's goes very against, against the it not spirit only goes of against, Max. It not only that, but this is basically being run in the playtest. The playtest, too. Yeah, okay. That was actually that was the point I wanted to get to a moment ago. This is technically, you can run this in 3.5, 4th edition, and the D&D Next playtest. It's 2nd edition or nothing. <laughs> if you were running this in 4th edition, I, well, I don't know how no, you would uh, do it. Because just have fun. The whole system is based around combat, and combat only happens in this, except for the very beginning and end. Combat only happens if your characters want it to. We had we had combat roles. We had combat sections of half a dozen times. Half of those was because our cleric of war decided to go out and fight something. <laughs> oh, we started riots. Well, no, that wasn't even. Uh, uh, yeah. He threw a rock. Riots are left. bad. No, he threw a rock, then I pulled just distraction with smoke pellets and stuff like that and grabbed the party and got us out of there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, isn't that the hero of the wild? Heroes of the wild? Bam! Throws a rock, poof, gone. <laughs> Where'd the heroes go? I don't know, we're fighting now. We had, no, we, uh, 
we stopped one possible combat encounter by starting the Haunting Baldur's Gate. Yeah, it was just supposed to be a couple rounds of a fight. Uh, robbing a guy, taking a... What the heck was it? Oh yeah, his chest. chest. Yeah, oh, the chest with all the taxes are... Not the taxes. No, no it toll. was the tolls. The tolls, yeah. The tolls from one of the gates. And he, it's him, and a couple of guys, and a couple of kids with lamps, and... This guy, being a, a halfling, played up the kid angle, and rogued the hell out of him, just kind of bumped into him, stole a bunch of just random coins and stuff off him. Dirt, dirt like, oh, but for, first we distracting him, him, then he throws out, well, he I made it colder so that the mist of Baldur's Gate at night gets denser, and then he made a freaking ghost, and that scared them, and I rolled very, very poorly for all <laughs> of, to, 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 to save versus I. Stole from that guy three times. So they were all scared and running, then he did some more spooky stuff, and then uh, they just dropped it and ran. Yeah. And then when they were looking back, I turned the lich I, you know, illusioned into a chicken lich. Yes, yes chicken lich. lich. <laughs> yep. Dang. Oh. It's it's so, so, so yeah. weird and angry to run. Yeah. Look at, looking over the setting afterwards, I, I saw that, like, <laughs> okay. I, I didn't let after... anyone see it, but I kept complaining about it. And then as soon as we were done, I just kind of threw it to him, like, here, look at some of that. Look at what I had to it deal ex- with to run this. This module expected that combat to take over ten rounds. Nope. What? Yes. It's, uh, after ten rounds of combat, reinforcements come. That's what's supposed to happen. There's three, there was four. No, 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 no. that's there's... just in case it goes that long. There was there, six. There that's actually a good thing. They're like, hey, that's the most they described any combat in this game. We got game. through what a seventh round. round? Not it, like, what the end? Yeah. Oh, don't get me started on the end. Oh my <laughs> god! If you're you gonna have stop. someone ascend to pseudo god who chosen this, give them more HP. Give them better armor. No, give them the, even the armor doesn't matter. Doubler HP. Depending on how it plays out, one of these three patrons ends up being the bad guy that you fight at the end. And they are the Chosen of Bahal. And they get some, uh, they get they a jump. handful of powers. And the powers are cool, but they're all movement and, like, offensive powers. There's not, they don't, they're, it's the regular stat block they have, plus these, like, four or five powers. They don't get, they don't get an HP increase, so, so they can't take any more hits than usual. They don't get any defensive powers, they don't get any defensive bonus, so they can't... So it's still just as easy to hit them now. Wait, no, they're immune to poison? They're immune to poison, and I think they they have advantage they on dex. They, they also dex gain murder magic. What to do? And because of the way the initiative worked out, it was... She went first and attacked people, then... The raging half-orc barbarian crit... Oh, wait, no, first I... Oh, no, yeah. I... You... I, I pushed her back a couple squares, I did a little bit of damage, seven damage, not nothing yeah, big. Did a handful but of still damage. about almost a quarter of her life. Then our raging seven damage. our raging half orc uh, barbarian showed up. First time he'd ever played with us. First time I think he'd ever played D D. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has advantage on attacks. First one's like a seventeen and hits. Rolls the second one. Crit. Crit. Natural twenty. What so a- with like some sort of massive weapon, he did like he did like, like 17 or something? He did over 20. He did yeah, like 20 some 20. damage. He did like 20 some damage. All, all I know is that when our third combatant got to her, she had six hit points left. This is our oh. paladin. 15, leather armor, Tom. 15 AC. Oh. 33 HP. Final oh. boss of the whole encounter. 33 no, hit points. Then our paladin just like smited his weapon and that was, that was good game. Oh yeah. He rolled. Yeah. Yeah! It's only like 34 damage. He, he, he was able to... It was less than a round of combat. His re- her reinforcements just saw her boss, their boss get slayed and just like, oh, crap, I just ran. Out. I'm like, I'm not even going to have you guys fight them because we did the whole thing in like a real world minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Yeah. In game, 15 seconds. I'm like, no, all right, gonna... cool. Uh, crap, I'm going to buy Elder Sign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the last like the last encounter combat had le- has less went... than our accidental stumble than our accidentally stopping a kidnapping plot. Yep. Right. Well, no, we purposely stopped the kidnapping plot by break like busting. And the thing is, we all got two uh, we all had two rounds of combat in there, and there were there was also like what six you did have one more. You did, there were three fights in this. 
Yeah, aside from Dan, but <laughs> he was a cleric of no, war no, look, who look followed the spirit of his barbarian from a previous encounter. He's the barbarian primarch. Nice. Oh, dude, he was awesome. He was, <laughs> he was a war cleric to the extreme. He set up bear traps outside the bar to catch drunken pissers. <laughs> it worked. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he started doing that That's when I, uh... <laughs> what? No, I was just gonna say, here's the thing, though, about with encounter, something that I learned very quickly is you end up with a situation where you have a large... Am I coming through clearly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have the situation where you have... Pretty much everyone is mid-maxed into an insane level. Like, everyone's way over-specialized. Yeah. And that's why, you know, it, 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 it's, that's why either they're going to completely dominate every single encounter, every single fight, or if you manage right. to knock one of them down... The others fall like freaking dominoes. Yeah, so, I've seen that. But, but yeah, I've I've done that so many times. But here's the thing: if you're going to make a a big bat, you have to make it so you have to make it in such a way that you you know. I'm not saying you, Chris. I'm saying yeah, like but, the writers of the module yeah. should have understood that you essentially have a team of four four to six insanely mid max people. <laughs> this thing. Not necessarily sure. max, but focused. Focused. I will focused. mention that to spice up the adventure because it was so boring, I gave everyone a magic weapon or item or something. I stole them. But for the most part, that didn't really come into play. Yeah. No, no, a little plus one sword ain't doing shit. <laughs> well, no, some of these were serious things, but most of them were like more like armor or items. Arthur had an actual not, like throwing yeah, war pick. That's why he was able to throw an arrow. That's why he was able to throw four dice. Let me give this example of exactly how you could have made that final fight a really intense, really thrilling encounter. The first thing she does, the first thing she does Die. is call on Bale. Uh, mm. Bale or whatever. Whatever he is this and week. He, and he smites the party, paralyzing everyone. You have to do a, co a constitution-based save oh, in, order really to, cool. in order to do, in order to basically break free of it. Now, what has this done? You know, now, now you get to roll at the start of your turn weapon. What is this done? It's effectively just turned that fight from like, oh, we're all, you know, it's the Power Rangers and we're all going to do our special thing, those special <laughs> thing and knock them the fuck out to level Holy three stuff. shit. Hurry, get this guy up, get this guy up. We got, <laughs> what are we doing? Like suddenly they're scrambling like ants. Yeah. They got nothing. Like the barbarian might be able to break free and do a big hit, but you know, he's just one guy. What's you know doing? what? It might have been slightly scarier if I had hit with my first attack because she had murder magic, which at which uh, paralyzes, and then if they fail that, then they're unconscious. Yeah, basically we're. And it was badass, but I missed with that one attack. There's nothing that gives her more attacks, and there's nothing that conveys that when you get it when she gets attacked. No, that that effect should have been a control effect to hit the whole damn party. Yeah, that would have been cool. <laughs> Or, or heck, but a large swatch of civilians. Or maybe... In second edition, one of the most devastating spells you can cast on a bunch of low-level characters is sleep. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, bam, half the party is essentially out of the ah. mind. Matt did that in one of the guards. It becomes such a... That's also why in second edition, Illithid's mind flayers were so terrifying. Just because they would shut down half the party right away. Yeah, and, and then eat like, your brain. What are, you gonna, what are you gonna do? Like, okay, yeah, maybe if the cleric of the fighter is still up, you can kind of keep things going, but what if it's the fucking rogue and the wizard? Oh. What if you got that? <laughs> the wizard you better know? start running, because he's a so tree. much fun in a different game I run the other night. Some guy show up from another door and go after the wizard. He was terrified. <laughs> did you take Blink? Did you take Ray of Enfeeblement? Did you take Fly? Or did you just buy a bunch of fireballs and lightning bolts? <laughs> but well, see, that's the thing. That's what you could do to juice up. That's what you. That's what they could have done to juice up that encounter, so that it was really interesting and mm -hmm. just. The it would have turned that fight from. Yeah. You know. She and I realized she runs, that... up, she, she runs up and knocks one guy out. Okay, but then everyone just dog piles her at yeah. that point. But okay, yeah. Okay. What you know? Yeah, you change that around some way. It's everyone like you can't ever, you can't really dog pile her. Yeah, and I realized that I had the ability as the DM to just do whatever I wanted with her. I could, have been, I could have given her wings and made her like, yeah, and doubled her HP and done all these sorts of things. But 
Did you really? Want part this? of the part of the reason I kept running this was almost as a protest. I ran it as written, just because that's how encounters works. I want I'm sitting down, I'm reading it, I'm running it as it's written, and then we're done. Because this is still technically part of the play test. Like this, yeah. Like this is still technically part of the play test. How do the wor rules work as written? And the thing is, most of the player rules, they seem to work out all right. Some of, like, some of the changes they've made, you know, through the various iterations of the playtest, I don't like as much as the earlier versions. Some of them are better. I don't know. But the thing is, this did not run well. Yeah. Now, I have one question. How what? much AC did the guy that we kind of blasted in half with those cannons have? Oh, the printouts upstairs. So is it 25? You have to print out the uh, monster stats since it's... Cause it that's how they handle like... doing it for three different editions. You go online, you print them out. That I have no complaints about. Yeah. I forget, but it probably would have been maybe 20. 17 or so. Oh, no, he was just he was in real regular arm. Yeah, he didn't have magic anything. Yeah. He was in, like, full play. Yeah. yeah they shot him with a cannon because... Oh. We stole a pirate ship. We just... They stole a ship and this and that. Pirates. Um Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I want to keep this thing at like an hour, so I want to start wrapping up, and one thing I want to do, yeah, uh, I want to show off a few things just to compare price-wise what you got. For $35, you could have also bought Shadowrun. Shadowrun 4th Edition is, was 35 bucks. It might be more due to inflation, because I bought this when it first came out, but $34.99. And look at how much more you get, and oh, no, wait, I want to show off my point about art. Bam! I know they're just the, uh... Characters? Yeah, they're just the characters, but you have full-on art inside. There's drawings throughout this whole book. Just to give you an idea there's of what this stuff is AR, yeah, to give you a feel of what's going on. You know, there's... It's not color, but it's art. It's... All this had was these bland technical... Drawings of buildings, architectural drawings, yeah. Um, for 30 bucks, you can get one of the 4th edition modules. They have three for every tier, so three sets, three of these take you from 1 to 10, I think it is. Three take you from 11 to 20, and then three take you from 21 up to 30. Oh look, you're a god now. And these are fun, these are well-written modules. And you really don't, you get like a book or two, but here's something you get with every module for the most part, especially since 4th edition started that you don't get with this at all. Maps. Every single colors. one of these is poster-sized and double-sided. You still have to draw a bunch of maps, which is cool because I like doing that, but for some of the bigger, more epic locations, places that are really significant, they give you an actual battle map. This module doesn't even have diagrams in the book to show you how you should set it up. It's just, oh, whatever, which goes along with the D and D next theater of the mind style of running it, but if you're doing this in fourth edition, I get what are you doing? You run, you quit Maybe. drawing up a battle map every time. I know Maybe the fourth edition do that. printouts for the stuff. No, no, no. It's it's, it's no, 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 no. It's one pamphlet that you get that has here's the three point fives, here's the fours, here's the next stat blocks. Oh dear. Yes, there's also a separate thing that's a bunch of supplemental things that you can throw into the adventure, which isn't, which aren't that well. Actually, they're kind of neat, but you guys had your own side adventures. But nowhere in there are their maps either. Hey, this is uh, these real quick. Yeah, and these are about these are thirty bucks, so slightly less, and you'll get a lot more fun out of them. And I wanted to show you what we got with D and D Encounters when it was free. Oh jeez. Yeah, Tom. Bam. Yeah, I remember that. Sheet full of tokens. Encounters when it was free. Yeah, they're all bland. They just say like item, zone, trap, monster. You know, there's no graphics or anything, but they're all different colors and they all work out really well. You've got a book that is the is longer, yeah. though that depends on the module. Yeah, you got that. On the session, but in general, yeah, yeah, but I know for a fact since this is Storm Over Neverwinter. Look right in there, actual art. Yeah. Pictures okay. of things that you see no, in the game. Really Features of the area. Beach, well, that's just because these have actual combat encounters. I am the one who has to figure it all out for everything else. I just wanted to get to. There. There's Helm's Hole. More art. Nothing like that in Baldur's Gate. It gives you like a... Just like an isometric cutaway view. So like, oh, here's what it looks like inside. No, I don't even know if they have a reference to scale. Well, and, and you got usually two poster-sized maps, double-sided. 
Usually each side had two maps on it. Highly detailed. Yeah, these were great. Multiple encounter maps on each side. Yeah. Like yeah that. It was designed for yeah. two separate encounters. Their on, and yeah. Actually play through. Two, right there. And you get that with all of these. Alright, anything else that my players and Tom, anything you guys feel like saying about this? I can't believe they charge money for that. <laughs> $35, Tom. $35. Can't I want to show you something. This is Madness at Gardmore Abbey. This is what 12 bucks more gets you. There are a ton of maps. There are four books. I'm not even going to dump it out because it's so much stuff. You get a deck of many things. You get all this great stuff for just like 12 bucks more. You have a perfect playground for my Scion. Oh, no, that module is so much fun. And here's something you don't get. We have it because if your store is registered to run D&D Encounters, they got a oh, opening weekend kit or something like that, which has an alternate, much better version of the prologue encounter from this. Because the one in this is more or less, you show off the fights happening, oh, it's over, you're done. And this thing. Great. Yeah, the one we got with Encounters is actually, has a lot more action and took like, it was a good combat, Tom. Yeah. We actually sat down and it was like an hour-ish long. Yeah, there was good. there were stages, there was a lot of cool stuff, people were being inventive and creative. It was fun! And then it went And right then it all down went downhill. Down but, we did get this. This is the only map for all of this encounter, or this entire adventure. It is the wide. This is the wide, the big market. This is where the first encounter, the prologue encounter happens. And the last. last. Our last. Depends on who you get. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, since there's three different endings. Yeah, Raven Guards la uh, happened on the docks. Ha! Ha! You guys, oh, they shot him. It was, it was <laughs> pretty fun. Great. Oh, oh, your cannons we shame. might do a separate video where it's just them talking about the hilarious shit that happened. Because it was, there were wacky hijinks. There were but, like a... um, this is the only combat map for the whole thing, and then this is something that should have come with the game, or come with the module. It should have. The Baldur's it. Gate map, Tom. Look at this. You got a full-on map of Baldur's Gate. Whoa, where'd you get that? That came with, that's the other side of the lot, of the map I was talking about. Wait, seriously, the one that you got for free because the store runs account? Yeah, this yeah. is free, yeah, this, this didn't come with the $35 This did not come with the $35 kit. This, I don't think I could have run this module without this, because otherwise they would have oh, been no. pointing out where they were going on the map on the front of the uh, DM screen, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's I just sat back, hell, halfway through the season I found out I had a working laser pointer, so I'm behind the DM screen, it's sitting up there, I'm like, uh, this thing is happening around there-ish, or there-ish. Yeah, but There's not a map to switch out. I don't need to get up. Yeah. Oh, true. That's but this doesn't, doesn't come. This what, this doesn't come with the thirty-five dollar kit you buy. Nope. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I know. Pathetic. It's like they charge you thirty-five dollars to get less. That's another thing I want to show off. The fourth edition modules that I was talking about, they don't come in a stupid paper slip cover. They come oh, in these nice fold out things with cutouts on the inside, so you actually see this is actually, you know, cut out. I know it's not a big deal, but it's custom stuff. It's yeah, nice. It's, and it was it's a presentation. It matters. And, the, yeah, you get a nice, big, huge, thick book for running it, and I think there's three different sets of maps. And this cost, these cost 30 bucks. Five bucks less than this skeleton of a module. Anything you want to add, Vickers? It had so much potential. That's what's upsetting. Like, so especially like, to me, to Chris, to Max, really to Tom, there was so no. much potential here. Like, little tweaks they could have done that would have made it run much better, much smoother. The thing is, they had us, they had us being the henchmen on the periphery of a political, of, of politics. And the thing is, there was no way to get in deeper, and honestly, the only choice was to not do anything and sit back and nothing happened. Oh, yeah, they kind of just, for most of it, ignored the plot and had their own fun little adventures doing yeah. stuff like that. But we'll the thing is, mo most groups that are running this, they're going to be, okay, we're supposed to do adventures, we're supposed to be involved, but there's no way to actually get involved. You're, li you're limited no, to No, you're walking around and you're like, oh, that's weird, that's weird. I wonder, seriously, like, it describes it, things as you're walking around, like, while they're walking around doing other stuff, describe these events that they see. And then it's not like... They, then there's nothing to drag them into it at all. It's yeah. purely up to whether or not they want to stop this thing from happening. And for some of the stuff, they were like, Hey, you know what? I don't care. Fine, screw it. Oh, another riot's happening? What? 
Whatever. Oh. You know what? That's I'm another thing. Advantage. I want to address this before we finish up. One of my notes just says <laughs> that my players love riots. <laughs> one, ignored another. For the first Wars. real session after the, the first session after the prologue, our cleric of war sees a bunch of like people getting rowdy and, and, and like you know there's a bunch of civil unrest and he's just like, hey guys, watch this. Takes a rock, made him do rolls to see what he did. Just hits a guy, hits a guard who starts shoving a peasant who starts shoving other people, yeah. and they start a small scale riot. Later on, there are actual riots happening, and I think. I forget if it's something that's just supposed to happen no matter what, because there no, that's thing. There are events that no matter what the failed, players do, they happen. No, we failed convincing Raven whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's, not kill people. No, that's the massacre. Oh, it's massacre. Massacre is something different. I'm not even gonna get into that. The the riots were the thing where there's just riots are happening all over town. It's like a citywide riot. So most some of the people decided, okay, we're gonna patrol our bar, which they had at that point, and they just kept that area safe. Max here, his wizard goes out, well, his mage goes out, and starts giving pointers. Oh, no, 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 you gotta throw the bottles overhand, or else you're never gonna, get, you're never gonna hit your target. Aim for the knees. No, 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 no. just keep walking. I, I created Adel, uh, an illusion of Adel Adrian telling the people to riot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I just sat on a rooftop, drank some iced tea, and watched part of Baldur's Gate burn. Yeah. While a ragamuffin plays the violin for him. Yes. That's something we'll, we have to do another video for the ridiculous, oh, yeah. the fun stuff we had that could have and, happened in any adventure. And during that, my character, who was a thief, had, had links with the Thieves Guild, just like, wait, there's a riot happening, the, the mercenaries that are supposed to patrol are going to be distracted, let's go take their stuff. Yeah. They looted Worm's Rock, it was great. <laughs> I got a new bit. The only <laughs> guy who he ran stole, it. Guy, he stole like the head of the one uh, of the Flaming Fist Guild. Yeah. Or the bed. Yeah, I stole his bed and filled his uh, rooms with chamber pots. Yep. The, the that only, was ridiculous. Because. The only thing I have to add is, in my 20 plus years of playing D&D, <laughs> I don't think I have ever come across a module that cost this much and was this poor quality. Yeah. <laughs> I think that really says it. Like, it, like, there is <laughs> like, so much potential, but, like, like, yeah. man, no, like, no, 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 there's there's potential, just... I think that's what really made like, me so sad about this. There's all these little glimmers of hope of something that could be cool, but... The way it's carried out... I basically just, have to rewrite the whole thing myself yeah. to get it there. Yeah. But I the thing is, a couple yeah, little tweaks... Yeah. Yeah, give me a free PDF that's a one-page, like, plot not like, like, bullet-pointed list of plot points, and have me make an adventure off of that. Yeah. That, that's the thought I'm going to leave this on, is that I don't think I've ever seen an adventure that gives you so little and was so frustrating as Murder Baldur's Gate. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think we're going to leave it at that. Yeah. Like, the I thing, agree. apparently... Andrew, we said we're going to leave it at that! No, the campaign guide was good, that's right? Work. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's I will, that's a good point, and then we will wrap it up. But, the campaign guide is actually good. I don't think this is worth $35. But maybe ten. If they had sold this, the the sheet, not the sheet, the DM screen and the uh, campaign guide for Baldur's Gate, 10, throw this 15. together for ten, fifteen bucks. That's worth it. This oh, would have yeah. been cool. Because reading through, but that's another thing. I had to read the sixty-one page campaign guide, and half the stuff in here doesn't happen. There's all this cool stuff I don't have to care about. Yep. But I have to keep it in mind in case they stumble into it. Yeah, because it actually tells you all of Baldur's Gate. And then they make use of none of it and handle that poorly. Here's just yeah stuff. Maybe maybe it should have been. Here's a 61 page guide, and then the adventure is basically a walking tour of. That would have been so cool, Tom. That would have been awesome. Yes. That would have been I'm so sorry. Cool. Everything would have been awesome except the stupid module. Uh, Where's the murder? Whatever. We're done. That's it.